Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. This is William Green, and I am joined today by Stephen Van Camp and Lewis in Austin, Texas. Stephen is an American Orchid Society, I always get this wrong, uh, s- finish my sentence. Probationary judge. Probationary judge, which basically means a judge. And uh, he is going to talk to us today. We're going to be talking about, one, some catacetums. It's summertime. Our catacetums should be in full growth mode. I know that mine are. Stephen, I'm guessing yours are too. Most of them. I've, I've got a few stragglers that are still inside, but uh, most of them are, are cranking right now. I've got a few right here we can show you in a, in a little while. Okay, cool. And you're using the pet method of potting with all of your catacetums this year or most of them uh yes all of them every single one okay cool so that's going to be exciting to see how that's coming along part one is going to be catacetums today part two we're going to make a separate video for uh catlia i'm going to uh, update my catlia rex uh which are in sheath right now super exciting time and if you have any catlia news as well Stephen, feel free to share that with us yeah, I've got one here on the side that uh, it's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's a, I'm not going to talk too much about it now, but it's it's a little mutant, and it's uh, but it's a cool species and um, awesome. Okay, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I am going to start out by showing you my four catacetum types, and we're going to just kind of discuss what they look like, what's going on, and so here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see this video, Stephen? Yeah. Okay, so this is a Cygnotus Wine Delight, and it's my furthest along plant. These are all potted in tightly packed sphagnum with a bark and perlite chunky bottom. And I think the only thing that separates this potting method from the pet is that there's no inorganic medium and res- water reservoir at the, at the end. So there's, it's at the bottom, so it's kind of like a half pet type of a deal. Yeah. And this is more of a kind of a standard way to grow your, your catacetums or in that group is, you know, mostly sphagnum, long fiber sphagnum, and then some, something chunky in the bottom. Okay. So let's see. Um, this one, it was the first to kind of pop out of dormancy um, early. It, it, it tends to be the first to drop its leaves as well. So it's kind of on a different timeline, but you can see the bulbs here, the ones that were really shrunken up uh, when the roots were developing during the late part of the dry season, they've all kind of plumped back up. Still a little wrinkly, but definitely not anywhere where they were. Yeah. And, how, how long have you been uh, watering now? Oh, good question. Um, this has been watered since the beginning of June. So it's okay. been about a month, a little over a month. And you can see the new pseudobulb developing, but I uh, wanted to ask your opinion just on this right now. When you see this, d- does this indicate, does this give you an indication of how the f- how big the finished bulb is going to be this year? Or do you think this still has a ways to go? Um, you know, there's still a lot of growing season left, but I would say it's on track to be at least as big as that, that one there on the bottom right. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say it's actually probably going to exceed that size okay uh, it, you know it's, it's tough to tell from that angle and, and without being there but i'd say you're you're doing a good job with getting a larger bulb this year than than what you have previously done well that's definitely the goal so what we're looking at here is just the side of the pot and i was surprised because this thing seemed to be rooting pretty aggressively earlier uh early on when 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 the plants weren't being watered but now that i look on the sides i don't really see that many roots on this guy I mean, through there, they've probably, you know, they've probably taken on some algae. So they're going to be the same color as, as the sphagnum and the algae um, there. And it looks like you've got some there. And, um, you know, they don't necessarily stay that nice, pristine white for, for all that long, especially once you've started growing. And like I said, the algae kicks in. And, um, but, they're, you know, they're there. It looks like in the bottom left there, is that a, a root tip? Yes. Or is that? Yeah. Yeah. The root. So, the roots on this guy are yellow. That's interesting. They don't have green roots. They're kind of yellowish. Yeah. So I'd say it's it's still cranking out roots and, and and looks good. I wanted to ask you too. I when I potted these up, I chose not to remove last year's roots, and so these are all from previous years. And I'm just wondering if it's a problem to have them in here like this. You know, are they going to rot? Are they going to cause problems for the plants? Or is it okay to just leave them on there? 
Uh, so they will probably rot, but that's fine. And no, they will not cause problems for the plant. Um, you know, as they're decomposing, they're releasing nutrients and the, the new roots will take it up. Um, you know, those guys grow, uh, at least their species, obviously that's not a, a, a hybrid found in the wild, but those species grow on, on, uh, rotting wood and, and stuff that would not be uh, very attractive to, to a human being. And, and so having some stuff breaking down in the pot is, is all part of it. And, and to be honest, they love it. Okay, cool. Well, uh, let's see here. Let's go back to that screen. Okay. So yeah, this definitely is the biggest that it's ever been in, in terms of leaves that it's put out. So yeah. I'm really hoping it didn't bloom at all last fall. Um, I'm hoping that this year it will put out. I, I see no reason for that to not bloom this year. Then that, that looks good. It looks like a mature size plant and should get some nice fragrant flowers in, in the fall or winter. That is what we're hoping for. Okay, let's look at our next one. Um, this is the one that I've had the longest. This is a little more modia, and it normally blooms uh, in uh, right around uh, the winter solstice after it's gone into, after it's lost all of its leaves. Yeah. And um, it uh, it doesn't have that many leaves on the growth, but um, the bulb still looks like it's in line to be as big as previous bulbs. This one's had a lot more success with the roots, or at least there's a lot more roots in the pot that I can see. Yeah, those look good. Um, there is some kind of, some browning in some of the roots. I'm not exactly sure why, but... Um, it's, it's just part of that same process. The, the roots are aging. You know, they don't, they don't keep that pristine white color for all that long necessarily. And... Um, you know, if you've got a lot of roots, even if for some reason, let's say a snail comes through and cuts one in half or, or does something that those little jerks like to do, um, you know, losing a one or two roots, it, it doesn't matter. Your, your plant has got so many roots in there and it's, and it's actively putting out new. And so all those roots that grew down um, earlier in the year, now they're starting to branch as well. Uh, so that, you know, that, that looks good. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, a plant that size sometimes can start busting through. You know, I have roots just pouring out the bottom sometimes, or uh, or even if the if the plastic starts to get a little old, it'll start it'll start breaking the plastic. Um, but it looks good. Okay, yeah, I'm hoping it, this pa this plant in the past has had much bigger bulbs than these uh, recent years. So I was just hoping to get it kind of get it back up to the size that it was. Um, I don't know if it needs a year of transition to kind of move into that but i've seen really little plants put out huge bulbs given the right conditions so that's kind of what i was hoping for I'm not quite sure yeah, it looks like your three back bulbs are are all about the same size that's so probably topped out um in, in terms of, of final size but you know if, i can tell you from experience that when i got this plant the bulbs were twice that big they were like oh really? yeah they were really big okay so, yeah I'm hoping to get them back up to that size. It's it's. Are you able to look at the growth and kind of estimate where this? I think I've already asked you this question, but I, I mean, not not really this time of year because there's so much growing season left. Okay. But, you know, it, it at least at that particular angle, it looks like the the newest bulb is pretty darn close to the same size as the other ones, and you've got two or three more good growing months ahead of you. So I'd say you're on track to have a, a pretty large. Well, maybe not twice as big, but um, bigger, bigger, certainly bigger. If we can do bigger, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's look at our next one here. This is three of four. Um, this is a Fred. Is it called Fred Clarkara? Fred Clarkiara? I think both work. I call it Fred Clarkiara. Fred Clarkiara. So this is a, <laughs> this is an me. Uh, unnamed hybrid. This is one of the SVO hybrids, Sunset Valley Orchids, and uh, it, it is as as yet not in the orchid registry. So it's a cross between a Catacetum and a Mormodia. Okay. And uh, the top part looks pretty good. The leaves look pretty pristine. Uh, pristine. Uh, this one's been a little bit slower. You can see last year's bulb is pretty big. Um, is that the only bulb? This is last year's bulb. But and there's no others. There is one right here. 
Oh, okay. Oh, so that was real small. Yeah, it, it, and this is what I tend to find with plants that come from SVO. It's like they have, you know, one year it's like a little bitty bulb still kind of in the seedling stage, and then the next year I don't know what they put on those things, but yeah. they get big. Fred's got that, uh, he's got that magic touch, and he's got a formula that really works. Yeah, no kidding. So I was just hoping to see something, you know, the same size as last year's bulb if possible but in terms of rooting there are roots for sure the pot's definitely not full of roots uh by any means but um there seem to be quite a few kind of pushing down through that sphagnum again have some browning here some different points i don't know if that means that the root is dying off or if it's just discoloration i wouldn't worry about it but uh Looks pretty good here. Yeah, it looks great. Lots of branching. These are the roots from last year that I just kind of left them in there. It was packed very tightly into a um, just a small little plastic pot, barely fit in. Um, but it seemed to do well under those conditions. So, um, it does. And really packing in that moss, um, you know, helps helps get a, a lot of airflow and helps dry out a little faster. In fact, I've had some people. Uh, you know, online tell me, hey, you should uh, you should use loose sphagnum and it'll stay wet longer. Uh, you know, my experience of growing these guys for almost 15 years is that they like to be wet but not sopping wet. Right. So I say jam that that sphagnum in there as much as you can and, and let it dry out um, and, and hit it with water a little more frequently. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this one I'm really excited. Now, for a Fred Clark Giara is there a blooming season per se? Um, I mean, it, it depends on what the background is. You know, these complex hybrids can, they can really bloom just about any time of year. But um, as far as if I would ha have to say w when the average time is that they bloom, it's going to be in the fall to winter. Okay. So you're saying when the, when, when the growth is completed, then the plant will think about pushing out a spike. Probably. Okay. But again, you know, they can bloom just about any time. All right. Once the, once the growth is mature. Okay. And that means when the bulb is completely filled up. Yeah. All right. So here's the last one I have to show you. This is the one that I think looks the best out of all of them in terms of the the top growth, the root growth. And this is a catacetum hybrid. It's called Fong Sing. And it's a cross between the classic catacetum jack of di It's a orchid glade jack of diamonds which is the first catacetum I ever actually saw to show. And then it's crossed with another one called Jose Abalo. Okay. And uh, this hybrid seems to have been around for a while. It's in the RHS orchid registry as had been made several years ago, but the roots are, or the leaves are just nice, big and fat. You can see this, uh, the new pseudobulb is already starting to plump up and there are just tons and tons of roots in the pot. So, and and wow. none of them have that browning on them, so that's why I'm like, why did why does this plant look so much better when it's in exactly the same situation as the other three? Well, it's not exactly the same. If you look at if you flip, if you go back a little bit, you can see that those roots coming down. They, you can still see the tips. Those roots are a little newer. Uh huh. They're still white, um, but they'll as they get longer and extend, they'll uh, they'll probably you know, green up, get dark green or, or a little brown in some areas. Uh, but again, that it's not really that, but you, so you can see all, all the root tips there. So those are, are brand new. Uh, they still have that fresh new car scent, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Love that. Um, so <laughs> love that. <laughs> so yeah, another, uh, this is another one that there are some pictures online of this one because it seems to have uh, been around for a little while, but I'm certainly, uh, I'm even seeing new roots still pushing out here, and then the current roots are, are branching. And I'm just going to take a second to mention that I do use um, Ray Barcolo's Kelp Max that you can get on his site. Uh, it's uh, firstrays.com. And uh, I see catacetums responding very, very favorably to uh, treatment with Kelp Max. They, the roots really branch off. Uh, they branch a lot. So they really respond yeah. to it. Max is, is a good product. You know, Ray Barklow is a good guy. Very, very knowledgeable. Um, I, I would definitely take the time to check out his website. And um, before we go on, you can see if if you want to pause it there, you can see how sort of white the base of those leaves are. 
a lot of people in the fall time, and you can see there's kind of white stripes. Yes. Yeah, right, right in there. Uh, a lot of folks in the fall will say, hey, is my plant getting close to being dormant? And, and you can tell when it's getting closer to being dormant when those white stripes become uh, a darker green and then they'll start to turn yellow. Like you'll just see a, a slight yellowish tinge to those. Down here at the base. The plant, yeah, exactly. And that's when the plant is starting to think about dumping those leaves for the winter. It's it's doesn't mean it's going to do it immediately, but uh, uh, you know you, you can probably start dialing back your fertilizer, and then you'll see the the lower leaves fall off, and then maybe start dialing back the water a little bit, and then and finally uh, you know cease all water at least by the end of December. So you're saying don't be looking at your leaf tips as much as the base of the plant. The base of the plant is really is is sort of your your uh, traffic signal light for kind of what's what the plant is thinking about in terms of different colors meaning different things. Okay, that's good to know. I'm always looking usually up here at the tips of the plant, and you're saying it's yeah. your, and you're saying it's right down here. Yep, that that sort of so now it's nice and white and, and sort of a light green, and that means it's in its active growth phase, and um, and then that, that white green will just turn sort of a regular green, and then uh, it will probably end up being a slight yellow, and then it'll start to turn orange as the, the plants drop their leaves. All right. Well, um, thanks, Steve. These uh, I'm glad to hear that they seem to look okay. Um, let's see what you got to show us. Um, I guess my first one is, uh, you know, I made that PET video, and this is sort of, uh, you'll, you'll see me repotting in the PET video, and I guess I should get this down and uh, and show you. It's also got Oh, okay, the, uh, so this is the one that you plotted um, in the video. Okay, yeah, I see. I remember that square yeah, jar. You know, I, I had to, to smash that pot. Yes. And, um, and this one is just cranking out new growth like like crazy. And How many bulbs is on that thing? You got like bulb, bulb city there. Got five new ones. And, and probably seven old, seven or eight old ones. And I think I chopped this one up last year. Um, but I've got a few ants going on. I've got, you know, you can see these roots are, are I don't know if the light works and you can see that they're, they're kind of green and they're covered in algae yeah, as well. Yeah, and you've got lots of little like side, skinny side roots popping off the bigger ones too. Yeah, I, I do. There's, there's the little sort of aerial roots. Um, there's some right in here. I don't know if you can see yeah. or not, but yeah, up here. I, I expect this one will have sort of a, a, a nest of aerial roots around. Oh, those are cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, if this was in nature, those aerial roots would be sort of capturing all the leaves and, and stuff that drops down and, and sort of self-fertilizing, not self-fertilizing, but holding those nutrients in as they break down. And, um, and this one's a really cool plant, big, uh, pink flowers on, on sort of a, it's got the cloacea style growth where it comes okay. out and it's very, very fragrant. Oh, nice. And, uh, it's, it's a really great one. I got it from a friend from a single bulb and, uh, a couple of years ago and, keep chopping it up and, and when, would, when would you be looking for spikes on that uh that one will come in the around january to february oh so that's it isn't that I, I love it i love it when they come in the middle of winter like that yeah and in the doldrums yes. of winter and uh, so it's kind of on that it's on that cloacea schedule uh, uh i guess i should tell you the name of it it is <clears throat> It is, it has lost its tag. Okay. It is a uh, Cloacetum dragons or dragons gem cardrona. I think it's anyway. It's it's kind of a cool one. Um, and then this one is an import that I got from Bella Vista a few years ago. This is Catacetum jurens. Oh, so it's a it species. Is, it is a species. Yeah. So it's. Um, it's doing nicely. It's got, you know, it's, it's older bulbs have, have fattened back up. Uh, the new growth is, is already much taller than the previous oh, growth. Oh, good deal. Yeah. So it's, it's probably about uh, an inch taller already. At least the bulb is. And, you know, like I said, there's, there's lots of growing season left. I expect this one to get 
nice and big, very cool flowers. Now, was this one you showed us earlier in the season that you decided you were going to water it a little earlier than the rest of them? I don't remember. Okay. It could be one of those. There was one. Oh, actually, there was one that looked like it was pushing out a flower spike, and you wanted to go ahead and let it bloom, even though the it was really kind of shriveled. I think that was um, uh, Black Knight, which is uh, Expansum by Tenebrosum. And that one is, uh, it, it was not able to push out that spike all the way and bloom, uh, but it just finished up on another oh, spike okay. uh, about a week ago and is actively putting out a new spike right now. Um, so, so once these plants get fairly large and they've got all the water and nutrients that they need, you know, sitting down here, see if I can shake this around, you can see the water sitting there in the bottom um, and plenty of roots going down there and uh, they'll just, they'll just, a lot of the hybrids will just crank out spikes all summer long. What kind of uh, fertilizer have you got in, are you using on these guys? Um, I like the Osmocote time release. Oh, okay. What's your uh, NPK so, balance on that? Yeah, so it's just a real balanced basic fertilizer. I'll add a, a, a lawn, so there's a CalMag mix that's for lawns. And I'll sort of mix that up in a, a two-thirds to one-thirds ratio, two-thirds fertilizer, one-third CalMag. Uh, so when I'm potting these guys up, you know, I'll, I've got the inorganic stuff on the bottom here. Then I've got the large-grade bark. And then I'll put a, a small layer of sphagnum on top. And then I'll add my fertilizer. And then I'll, I'll, pot, I'll put the actual plant in and, and start jamming down that um, sphagnum. Okay, so you put that for those fertilizer pellets in while the plant is still in the dormant season when it's still dry and they don't really become activated yeah. until you start watering. Exactly. Uh, and uh, and uh, I will put definitely a link to your catacetum culture video uh, on here so that uh, people can see the full process of how you potted those. Cool, yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the, the I like the time release fertilizer. It is set it and forget it. So, you know, a lot of folks are, are mixing up their, their fertilizer every week or once a month or whenever they remember. Uh, this, I'll, I'll put it in the springtime, and then that's, that's it. That's it for the year. I don't have to fertilize. Oh, that's it. nice. Just add water. Yeah. All right. What else What else have you got to show us? Uh, I've got that Cattleya, so I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that. But that was really it. Um, at this point in the season, there's not a whole lot going on. It's... It's mostly uh, the plants all are in this sort of active growth, green leaf phase. Uh, I've got a few spikes coming in, but uh, that's pretty so much the, it. So you for know, people who are following along um, and are in the Northern Hemisphere right now, their plants should be in active growth, actively still rooting. Um, watering should be uh, keeping the plants moist, not letting them dry out, correct? Yeah, you should be watering full bore at this point. Uh, there are people online who are like, hey, my my catacetum is, is not really growing. The new growth is stalled out. And, and then you see a picture of where it's growing. And um, it's growing on a windowsill that might be facing north. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it's maybe 70 right. degrees. That's in, one in thing that I'm thinking air conditioning is not friendly to these guys. These guys love heat, lots of sun, lots of heat. They're not going to grow that much without that sun and heat. I mean, it's 95 degrees out here right now, and another month from now, it'll be 105 probably, and they'll just be cranking. They, they like that it, heat, yeah. I, I think yeah. the one time that I visited Central America, uh, we saw some catacetum species in the trees there, and it was, it was, uh, it was very hot, <laughs> very, very yeah. hot. Oh, yeah. And steamy, probably. So, okay. Well, uh, if that's it, all we have for the catacetums, then we will uh, take a short break, and then we'll move on to part two, which is going to be discussing the progress of the Cattleya rex uh, seedlings. And then uh, uh, Steve's got a, a Cattleya to show us here in a second.